Driving for Uber Eats is great, but you can't lose track of the ultimate goal. And after they made certain changes to the rates in my market, I've actually been driving less for Uber Eats and may actually quit soon. Stick around to find out why that is. Greetings everyone, this is Elijah with The Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we'll be talking about why I've been driving less for Uber Eats, how Uber Eats has actually allowed me to build certain things on the side, and what am I doing for money outside of Uber Eats nowadays. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that Uber Eats made certain changes in my market as far as the rates are concerned. So before we can get a full picture of what's going on, we have to take a look at what the rates used to be. So we're gonna look at what my earnings were quite a while back all the way in March before any changes. And we'll also take a look at a more recent screenshot, which is my earnings after the changes. So let's leave here and let's go to the computer. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have a screenshot of my earnings uh, way back earlier in the year before they did any type of changes, way back in March. So we're actually gonna do the math to see how much was I making per hour. So I'm gonna type in the calculator, do everything on the screen here. Now, you see the referral reward right here. We're gonna minus that out because we're only including driving. So 396 and 16 cents minus 50, that gets us about 346. Now we're gonna divide this by the amount of hours I was online. 19 hours and some change. We'll round that up to 1920. And we see I was making around $18 an hour. Now, I've always given myself this range for Uber Eats between 11 and $18 an hour. Like, that's the range I always want to stay in. Now, if I get more than that, hey, that's awesome. But uh, one thing I don't do, I actually don't include quests because quests are so, I don't want to say they're random, but they're just kind of bonuses that Uber Eats throws out there. They're circumstantial. So I tend to only include like the uh, actual rates they're paying and also the tips. So we're actually going to repeat this just doing the tips. So let's take the 346.16. We're going to minus the amount of quests that we got, which is $47. So that's 299.16, and now we're gonna run the same thing divided by the amount of hours. And that gives around uh, $15.50. Pretty decent, right? And it's keeping me within that range that I wanna be in. Now we're gonna take a look at my earnings from a more recent week. Let's see, X this out. Okay, so this is the same month that the changes happened. And we see I made $355.10. One thing to note though is the amount of hours I had to put in did increase though. So we're gonna do the same math. 355.10 cents divided by this time it's 29 hours and we'll round that minute up in 30 minutes. So that gives me $12.11. Now, it's still within the range that I like to stay in between $11 and $18 an hour, but it's on the lower side. This is why I've been driving less. I mean, you saw the numbers. Literally, compare the $18 an hour versus the $12 an hour. And me personally, I actually consider that quest to be a bonus. So I would compare the $15 an hour to the $12 an hour it's pretty clear that I'm making less money, right? So, as you saw from the comparisons, the end result is actually me making less money. So I've had to do a few things to adapt to that scenario. By a few things, I mean mainly two. The first being, I focused on writing, finishing, and publishing my first book called The Anatomy of Financial Success. See, I've always had a passion for finances, multiple streams of income, and budgeting. And I've also developed my own YouTube channel called The App Lifestyle. In my book, I share about how I built multiple streams of income and how I budget that money to keep me moving forward financially, as well as making certain investments to make sure you're setting yourself up for a nice retirement. Speaking of books, 
If you haven't done so, you should consider picking up Harry's book, The Rideshare Guide, as it's a great introduction to the world of rideshare. And not just introduction, but it takes you from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And we know in this industry, anytime you step your game up, the end result is actually you making more money. I should also note that I'm grateful for Uber Eats for giving me the opportunity for this because Uber Eats gives you such time flexibility that it was easy for me to move my schedule around to write chapters in my book. In fact, once I finished the book and began the uh, publishing process, I actually took a full month off just to focus on the book. That wouldn't be possible in a different scenario, or rather, it would have been a little more stringent. So I'm thankful for Uber Eats for allowing me to do that. The second thing I've done in my spare time to adapt to these circumstances is actually becoming a video editor. I've always been pretty talented with technology, and I got a lot of exposure in video editing when I started my YouTube channel. But I started to cultivate my skills even more and got very good at it. Eventually, I found out that there's a whole freelance world when it comes to video editing, and there's no reason I can't enter it, so that's exactly what I did. I edit my clients' videos with a software called iMovie, but lately I've actually been educating myself on Adobe Premiere Pro, and I've been doing that because it will allow me to increase the quality of my work. And anytime I increase the quality of video editing, that means I can charge more. See, I take pictures out or put pictures in for clients, edit the subtitles, do rough cuts. All this is video editing terminology, but I was able to learn this while I was actually doing Uber Eats. See, when I'm driving food around, delivering food rather, I would be listening to tutorials on YouTube all the time or listening to audiobooks on the subject, brushing up my skills, and then I actually had a field to practice on my own YouTube channel. So when it came to actually getting clients, it was fairly easy because I educated myself and I had literally been doing the work for a while on my YouTube channel. It all ties back to Uber Eats. In this case, it's more of an indirect way because I could just educate myself in the car while I'm making money. So shout out and thanks to Uber Eats for that. Now is actually a good time to mention specifically why I chose to do a book and video editing. See, the video editing is a good source of what I call active income. This is income where you put energy into it and you can make immediate money, while the book is actually more passive income because it's set up on Amazon when someone purchases it, I get royalties off of that. So all that work has already been done and I'm reaping the rewards off of it. So I have one active income stream and one passive income stream. That way, my portfolio from an income stream perspective is just a little more balanced. In closing, I became an Uber Eats driver because the pay was decent and the time flexibility. This time around, the rates have kind of gone down a little, but the time flexibility really hasn't changed. I've taken advantage of that by leveraging two skill sets I could develop, the first being writing, the second being video editing. And like I said, it is all due to Uber Eats, both in direct ways and also indirect ways. I would say regardless of uh, what the situation is with Uber Eats in your market, you should really leverage that time freedom to get other streams of income off the ground. And also take advantage of the no one being in your car when you're delivering food because that is a great opportunity to learn a new skill set or to brush up on a current one via audiobooks and YouTube videos. It's also important to note that all this is related to money. So if Uber Eats actually did raise the rates back up or start offering more boosts and quests, I'll start driving more for them. It's really as simple as that. With that being said, this is Elijah for the Rideshare Guy signing off. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or join our email list. We have plenty of life after rideshare content that you may find valuable. And who knows, if you decide to become a freelancer like me, maybe you can drop a business card in the bags of your Uber Eats customers. Be sure to subscribe if you're new and give us a like for the YouTube algorithm. It helps a lot. Be safe out there, and I'll catch y'all in the next video.